success. Well, you got it? I tried to drown it and it wouldn't die. Even though it was underwater, it wouldn't die. And then I took some alcohol hand sanitizer and immersed it in that. This thing wouldn't stop moving. But see <laughs> this right there? That, yeah. there's still biological activity going on, Dottie. This thing is no. not dead. No, it's a confirmed kill. This is fine. Okay, hold on. Ah, what the hell? Oh, it is alive. Oh. Dude, right through alcohol. Oh my God, my turn nightmare. This green tree python, I suspect, has a pretty good tapeworm uh, trematode load. So we're going to uh, find out what's actually what's inside this. So even though I look at the animal and it looks great, it's beautiful, great weight, I know maybe I need to do a little bit just to resolve a future problem. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how to do a fecal float. This is just for some of us that really want to know what's actually going on inside our animal. And we can often buy a very cheap microscope. You can get it on Amazon. It's like $90 or something like that. And you're going to start working with uh, like slides. And we're going to make a solution out of Epsom salt and water. And what we're going to do is we're going to hyper saturate a solution. And I put a little bit warm water and I add a bunch of the salt and dissolve it, dissolve it. And what you try to do is super saturate the solution so it's relative gravity is like 1.26 if you use the hydrometer on that or a fractometer. But anyways, so you you hyper saturate this, this solution, hypertonic solution of Epsom salt in that. And what you're doing is you're making very, very dense water. Then you put that into a solution. Then you take the poop, break it up, mix it in there, shake it all up, get it so it's in a vessel like this and you let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. In theory, the eggs will float to the top. And then we're gonna sample some of this and we're gonna look underneath the microscope. We're gonna start at a 10 power. Generally, between a 10 and a 40 power, I can see a lot of what I need to do. And uh, I'm just gonna show you some things that go on inside animals. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a good thing to actually understand. Um, I'm, I'm obviously not, you know, formal parasitologist or anything like that, but I'm just a, a novice, a amateur guy that really likes to learn things and I want to teach you guys. This is a farmed green tree python and we're actually going to go see what evil lurks within this. We're going to do something called a cloacal wash. So I take some ringers. I take a little bit of Vaseline or triple antibiotic and I take my helper who's going to help me manage the snakes. What we're going to do, we're going to take something that doesn't have protozoa and parasites and whatever. We're going to flush that into the lower gastrointestinal system of this snake and then we're going to flush it around. We're going to drop it back out and we're going to put it under a syringe and see if we actually see anything. So this will not hurt the snake one bit. It's a nice, nice, healthy snake. This has already been going through some worming. But we're gonna we're gonna see. So it's not like one one worming will do all of it. Okay, here we go. So this is a catheter. What do I wanna do? Okay. There we go. <laughs> Very strong snake. If we can hold it a little bit straight a little bit. Mm-hmm. Beautiful.
pay dirt. We will now have what we want. You want to put them back in there, KJ? First thing let's go do is go wash our hands for a sec. Just don't put your hands in your mouth because you're already skinny enough. Look at that, Kevin. I'm seeing some uh, tapeworm here. Yeah, you're right. Right there's a that's a tapeworm. Right in that little bubble, right? Is that the... Yeah. So it looks like a cluster. Let me get this right. Looks like a little like raspberry. Hold on. Raspberry is a perfect way to describe that. Yeah. Yes. Keep moving. All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It does look like those too. Right inside yeah. of it. Yeah. Let's see. It's, they're, so they're trapped in the bubble. That's interesting. It seems to be. Yeah. Let's see. All right. There's one right. Dead center. Oh yeah. See, those look different though. They look. They, let's see how they look like they're broken up. Did something come out of it already? Oh yeah, they're 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 uh, pretty beat up. I imagine. Okay, so right now I'm using a uh, forty power mm -hmm. on this, and I'm just kind of randomly just doing, uh, looking around my fields. Oh, all right, what's this? Here we go. That's a doozy, right there. That could be a whip worm. See that sucker? There we go. Uh, you got yourself a nice where? big ass parasite, right? Dude, I thought that was that's a hair its, first. I think that's its mouth. So you see how the, yeah. the, um, the hair, have all these little ridges. Yeah, that one doesn't. Okay, so this, like, see the ridges right there? Yeah, you can see it. This one, yeah, this one's got. So now you got, you can see it's an, it's system. So let's take a look. It's a nice one. So you can see right through its system. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's huge. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's, that's gold. Oh. Now see how it ends? Right there. Yeah. And then. Oh, those egg sacs right there? Okay, so that right there. Hold on, I'll tell you. Get a good one. Okay, right there. So that is a tapeworm. Tapeworm. Egg. 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 There's a couple of them right there. And what animals did you just get this from? Is that a green tree python? That's it from a, yeah, it's from a. Farmed green tree python, and I, you know, I was expecting that because we we go through a worming process. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah, and again, it's recording on the screen. Do you too. see? Let's see. Let's get some little bit of contrast. It's encased. You yeah. see around here, and you get this cluster. So right now, this is a nice little egg cluster. So you might have maybe a dozen eggs in that. And uh, they would be ingested by maybe a tadpole or ingested by another animal. And then that goes into the gastrointestinal tract of that animal and then can hatch. Or some parasites need an intermediary stage like a tadpole. So it could be a fish and it will poop that out and then the tadpole ingests this, eats this egg and then the tapeworm hatches in the tadpole and then the tadpole is eaten or it turns into a frog and then it is eaten by an anaconda or something or a green tree python and then that inoculates the snake you bring this to a vet and then the vet will do something like this and right off the bat they're going to administer Um, that's probably a hair. 
That could be uh that looks like it's an internal. So right there, that's probably a worm. That's probably a hair. But right there. I showed you earlier the worms. Yeah. Oh, got another egg cluster there. So these stuff called uh, fecazole, which is a uh, very, very dense liquid, and it really brings everything to the top. Uh, that's a beautiful tapeworm egg case. We deal with protozoa with metronidazole. We deal with the basic uh, nematodes, ascarids, and whatnot. We use panic here, which is fendabendazole. When we start dealing with tapeworms and trematodes, so flukes and segmented worms, tapeworms, we use either praziquantel or we use this. And of course, the easiest way to do this is to have a good vet. All vets can identify parasites. They're very well versed in this. They have all the knowledge and the skills. It's a really good thing, but I want to show you guys a little bit. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, and as always, you have a lot to say and then tell me how hor horrible I am because I didn't wear gloves. You're, t you're asking them to leave you me. Leave me in comments to Kevin. Leave me comments because I'm parasite ridden. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and I really do appreciate your support. We just hit 400,000 subscribers. And of course, it's all because of you guys being interested in this weirdo. I got roped into something and it's not awful. Dingo, which I love very, very much, has made me feel really guilty. And I am going to break free of nerd and I'm gonna go with Donnie, my camera dude. I'm gonna go to South Africa, but we're gonna provide a GoFundMe link below because we really could use some help. I'm freaked out just by leaving the building for any extended period of time, but I'm gonna go there. Hopefully I'm going to uh, mess with rhinos, lions, crocodilians. Of course, we're gonna do all sorts of black mamba handling, all sorts of venomous. It's gonna be pretty- Pangolins. Pangolins, yes. Yes, that, do you know that pangolins are one of the most trafficked uh, wildlife species for uh, their parts, the scales? Um, and I'm going to see stuff before it's all gone because let's face it, guys, we're killing everything and we need to understand. And, you know, um, I learned a term. Uh, term. It's a bio, biophobe. Biophobe? Huh? Biophobe is people that are afraid of the animals that, and life that we inhabit the uh, earth with. So generally they've done, uh, they, they tested all sorts of people and asked them what they thought of bugs and insects. And most people think they're ew, icky and gross. That is a huge problem for conservation. I'm a massive uh, conservation at heart. I care about these species. I actually think that they belong here more than we do, certainly more than I do. And I want to preserve them. But Talking about these animals, including these animals in our lives is everything because we have to show appreciation. If we do not value it, we're not gonna save it. And God, I miss Steve Irwin because Steve Irwin brought all these animals to the forefront and he was just, he was magic. And I hope you guys are gonna spread the word and love these poor animals. They deserve our love. I turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!